Hello and welcome to the Delphian podcast. Delphian is an artist-led nomadic gallery focusing on emerging and early career artists. Each episode will feature a different art world practitioner, from artists and gallerists to collectors and curators. If you liked today's episode, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for coming. Um, so welcome to the next in our series of talks and panel discussions. My name is Benjamin Murphy and I am one of the directors of Delphian Gallery. Um, we're recording this for a podcast, so hello if anyone's listening on the podcast. Um, I'm going to have to probably repeat any of your questions for the mics because they're very directional, so um, apologies for that. Um, so we're here at Copeland Gallery, so thank you to them and to Maddie Rose Hills. Um, we're sat in amongst um, the Way You Are Not show in uh, Tess Willinder's room. Uh, she was in our last show. Um, so I am Benjamin Murphy. I'm one of the directors of Delphine Gallery. I'm also an artist exhibiting globally, and I lecture um, on art, and I write about art, etc., etc. Um, joining me is Nick Jez Thompson, who is the other co-founder and co-director of Delphine Gallery. Um, As well as running the gallery, he's an artist who over the past eight years has exhibited work in solo exhibitions and group shows in the UK as well as internationally in the US, Belgium and Italy. He's worked as a curator on nearly 40 exhibitions uh, all over the world. Um, To his right is Gemma Hickman. Um, Gemma is the founder and director of Peckham's Bowley Gallery, which is just up the road. With quality and authenticity at its core, Bo Lee Gallery provides support for emerging and mid-career artists alongside established names and facilitates a distinctive and thought-provoking program of exhibitions and on-site projects. They recently celebrated their 10-year anniversary. Um, To my left is Charlie Peters, who is a painter based in South London. She's recently shown at the Saatchi Gallery, Hauser & Wirth showroom, National Museum of Gdansk and Flux Factory in New York. Charlie has a PhD in fine art theory and practice and is a freelance arts writer. Currently, she's writer in residence at Instant Love Land and on the editorial board of Terps Magazine. Um, sorry if I read that really quickly, but um, deal with it. Um, <laughs> so, this is, we've, we're doing a series of these. This is, um, I think, probably the third or fourth of these. And basically, they're aimed at emerging early career artists or curators and basically we ask for questions from all of our social media followers essentially Um, so we get a lot of questions in and we collate all of those and some of them we get asked more often than others so they are what we are asking Um, but I think these things are much more useful for you guys if you guys ask questions too and rather than do that at the end just chime in whenever you want um, so let's get cracking. Yeah. So by far the most common question we get asked is, um, what's the best way for artists to approach galleries, and um, whether unsolicited emails work, how you should do them, that sort of thing. And there's, uh, yeah, there's lots of different viewpoints on this, but I'd say probably not. But <laughs> <laughs> what would you guys say? Um, I've actually taken a few artists on in, from submission in the past, um, not so much in the last maybe five, six years. Um, and we do, we allow submissions. Um, I think I think there are ways of approaching galleries. Um, we get so many, and so many are completely wrong for the gallery. And so I guess it's, my advice would be look at the gallery and, you know, really figure out the type of gallery you want to approach and then approach them and do it properly. So find the person to approach, you know, send an email to the right person, good images, um, um, don't walk into a gallery with your portfolio. That happened to me today. So Genuinely today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you walked into a gallery no, no. portfolio. Um, <laughs> no, I was invigilating our current show, uh, which is Simon Hoxton at the moment. Go see it. Uh, yeah, two people walked in with a portfolio. Yeah. It's just, it just. It's more that it's um, it's it's not that it's like I don't have time for you. It's more that it, it it can be quite difficult to be sort of pounced on in that way, and yeah. for, for someone to expect you straight away to make um, a, you know, subjective kind of 
you know, judgment on judgment their work, on their work mm-hmm. while they're there straight away without actually having a bit of time to look over it yourself. So I don't think it is beneficial for either party for that to happen. Yeah, and with, with the emails thing, it's like we get so many and some of them you read them and they clearly don't know anything about what we do. No. And it's just like a blanket emailing out to thousands of galleries. Um, and they're kind of a waste of everyone's time. Mm-hmm. If, I think the best way is to find a gallery that suits you. Mm-hmm. How do you approach galleries, or don't you? I don't. No. It's I embarrassing. I would never send a, an unsolicited email, because I know mm. I mean, it's just going to get ignored, and then that makes you feel worse than if you hadn't done it in the first place. Mm. So I think you can develop relationships with galleries, but it takes a very long time. And yeah. you have to do a lot of research, so you have to, there's no point approaching any gallery randomly. You have to do the sort of footwork and turn over openings and get to know them, otherwise it's, it's pointless. And I think, I don't know, I think, I'm not a gallerist, so I don't know, but I get the feeling that a lot of galleries sense a sort of sense of desperation from artists that do that, and it's a bit of a turn-off, I yeah. think. So I wouldn't do that. I have added galleries to like my mailing list without asking them, and that you can see that they open my mail out but I don't think I've got anything from that yeah that doesn't hurt I don't think unless they immediately remove themselves then it's embarrassing but then you don't have to see them again so it doesn't matter <laughs> I don't know um I think there's better ways to to raise your profile to galleries than just emailing them yeah I think just going them. along to shows and like talking to them but without, but, yeah. without, but without like Pulling out your portfolio. Yeah, just or beadlining like, lining and yeah, like, just like, like that's sometimes quite frustrating in yeah. private view. Someone just comes right up to my face and, and I'm you're having a conversation and yeah. it's just it, yeah. Private views are the worst time to do that yeah. as well because gallerists are in sales mode. Yeah. And even worse than that is at an art fair. Oh, art fair. Which is I think a lot of artists are very <laughs> tempted because they're like, I've got hundreds of these people all in one room. Now's the time to approach all of them, but. They're, they've paid like mm. how many thousands for that booth, so it's the worst time. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that art fairs are a good um, place to go, though, for artists to go and get a feel for the galleries, you know, um, you know, look and the type of work that they are showing, and then just just ask for their card, you know, take their card, and then maybe a week later, then drop them an email and say I visited your stand, or you know, or if they have a submissions policy, then send them some some work in. So use it in that way rather than. Mm than, you know, approaching them there and then. Also, I think that, Gal- this is a little bit of a sketch thing to say, being a curator, but I think curators kind of like to discover people themselves rather than, so I think making yourself familiar with these people and interacting with what they're doing is much better than telling them they should be showing your work because they want to be discovering that for themselves. Um, and just one anecdotal example is there's this guy who I won't mention his name, but constantly just like, commenting on our, all our posts, just being super lovely. He's never asked for anything from us, but he's just always like there with the support in the comments, sending his messages, posting about our shows. And then just because of that, we're now aware of his work. Mm-hmm. And uh, that kind of thing goes a really long way, I think. So in terms of emails, how, how best to approach that? Because I find like, obviously email inboxes only have a finite amount of storage space. And if you're yeah. getting constantly like, 10 emails a day or however many with full of images it's just going to slow things down and block things up yeah I would say keep it quite short your introduction quite short and sweet often I'll get an email and it's just a really long statement straight away and it's completely pointless because I I I can't see the work so that's the most important thing straight up or you know as I say a, a kind of more personal approach like I met you at blah 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 I came to your private view I really liked it or a kind of more personal approach straight away and then just a little bit of an introduction I think either put a, a couple of images in the body of the email so they're there straight away or attach some and I don't know a good maybe sort of five but I wouldn't go silly in attaching loads and loads of images um, just enough just to give them a sort of taste of the work I think um, and just keep it short and then maybe have a further reading attached or something um, and some some galleries have a submission policy, so check on the website first. Because if you if you send an email and it's actually not the right format, then they wouldn't look at it anyway. So it would be pointless doing it. Um, so yeah, I would say you keep it quite short and sweet. Yeah, one one kind of almost dirty little trick is if if you know of a gallery that you fit in well with, 
um, you're likely to be the kind of thing that is similar to the things they're already following. So if you're just engaging with their social media, often, not mm. overboard, but often and in a genuine way, Instagram will start showing them your posts. And if they follow you and you're engaging with them a lot, they're going to be seeing your posts a lot. And if you have chosen a gallery that would suit your work, then they're going to be noticing it. Um, that, well, that's what I was going to say, actually. I wouldn't even bother sending an email because you, you usually can't tell if they've even read it or received it. And they're very easy to ignore. But something like social media where you, the person trying to talk to these people, can actually see whether you get a response or not is, is more helpful than not. So I would usually, if I was following a gallery, not that I've ever done this, but I would imagine that if you send them a direct message, you can at least see if they've mm -hmm. read it. Yeah. That's helpful, at least then if they're not going to reply, you can think, well, it's not going to work. I'm going to have to get to know them another way. But I just think that th like sort of spending your time mm -hmm. when you could be making stuff or doing something useful just throwing out things into the wind and not knowing whether they're working or not, I think that's a bit of a waste of energy. Whereas you could be more strategic and at least get a sense of who's getting you or who's responding to you. Yeah. And no, yeah. So for the benefit of the microphone, um, someone just uh, mentioned the, um, the benefits of using actual post, the post these days, because people don't expect it. Something very nice and tactile that arrives in the post, you're going to remember. Yeah, so. and we do that with, with press releases and invites to shows. Mm -hmm. We put quite a lot of effort into them and seal yeah. them with wax seals and mm -hmm. yeah, put them in nice, nice envelopes yeah. and stuff. So it's a really like special thing that comes through the post and it definitely takes yeah. people by surprise, I think. Yeah, we still send mm -hmm. um, postal invites yeah. out to all mm -hmm. of our collectors. And, mm -hmm. and you know, suddenly if I, if I did receive something from an artist and it was, it was really special and you know, visually it did jump out at me, then yeah, I would, I would definitely get in touch. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or at least, I'd, sometimes I think there's that thing of, um, sometimes I, you might see something in the post. I think that's another way of, if you really think that this gallery is right, do it in lots of different ways, because I think you have to sometimes see things, something a few times before it actually registers, and you're like, oh, I, I feel like I've seen that before, or, um, and, quite often I'll keep something on file for like months, maybe a year, and then I might get something else and I'm like, oh yeah, that, that artist was really good actually and might work for a show I'm doing. So kind of use a few, you know, sort of target it in sort of slightly differently. And, yeah, because yeah. I mean, galleries can only do X amount of shows per year. So they yeah. may, they may, there's artists that we think we need to put them in a show and we've been thinking that for months or years and the right show hasn't come around. Yeah. So mm. they're still, they're still kind of uh, in the forefront of our minds and it mm. will happen, I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to touch on, you mentioned about being just comfortable and the importance of that. How do you find that or how do you make yourself be found? And how an artist should present themselves to the media to make themselves just comfortable? All right, well, we got a whole bank of questions on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyone, anyone got yeah. any response I, to that? Um, I really struggle with social media, but... Um, it, interestingly, I have actually taken two artists on via social media, um, and I think again it is it's engaging with them, you know, but without being too full on, um, like liking a few things, following them, and I think I think as the imagery keeps going in, you do eventually go, yeah, that that does work, and it just takes a bit of time. Um, so I just think, just just be active, I think. Just be active and, um, um, yeah, and, and target the right people. Um, but I think, yeah. And, and also the output of social media, just try and keep it consistent as well. Like, um, regular posts, um, also work in progress shots and stories, lots of stories, because they're always at the forefront of people's feeds, just sort of, so that you're always there. In the, mm. the, the, the forefront. Yeah. Oh, mm. No, go on. I would say actually, um, with some galleries, some bigger galleries, and you know, even some of the small ones, you're not necessarily getting the right person through social media yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Being interns. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I do as much as mine as possible, um, but I can't bear it. And, you know, I get other people to do it sometimes, and it it, it's so time consuming, I don't have the time to do it and I don't have the time to look at all, sometimes the messages that I get. So it might be my intern or my assistant that sees that and then they've got to know whether that would then be the right thing for me to look at. So 
it's, it is a tricky one, I think, with, with social media. I think it depends on the gallery you're targeting, maybe. And, you know, a lot of the old school galleries, that they're not quite there yet. Um, yeah, I'm still getting that. Yeah. So I, yeah. I think there's kind of two, two approaches to your social media feed. So say Instagram, because it's the one that probably best suits a visual media. Um, either you have like the, a gallery style account where you're just posting like very nice pictures of your artwork um, on a white wall and very little else. And that, they're really good because they straight away show what you're doing and they, the, the followers go up quite quickly. But then there's also the more diaristic approach where you post more about yourself and the things you're doing um, and your life and your personality and et cetera. And I think they're better for maybe, I think when connectors are, sorry, when um, collectors are thinking of buying from artists, they want to kind of know the personality of the person, et cetera. Mm. So the followers don't grow so quickly on that type of account because you're posting sometimes images that aren't that striking, um, yeah. but you're giving away more of your personality. Um, and that's the approach I use. But then obviously Delphine Gallery is, the, is a gallery approach and um, the followers go up much quicker on, on the, the more gallery style approach, I suppose. I think you don't have to reveal yourself as, a, yeah. as an individual. Because I think a lot of people, if they make things, they're not comfortable with that. Yeah. Like, I don't want to reveal anything about my real life yeah. or, what, or what I do or what I feel about things. I don't share my opinions. But I think if you can give people like a little glimpse of how your work is made, that's quite yeah. interesting. For Probably 90% of what you post is like in progress, isn't it? Well, it is now. I never used yeah. to be. I actually only ever used to do in progress things on stories. And that was my thing. So I'd post, I'd have like a nice gallery, sort of slick looking yeah. feed with finished work. And then on my stories, I'd show how I was making things. Because my work changes quite a lot as I make it. So it actually lends itself quite well to reveal the sort of secrets yeah. of how it's made. And then that disappears. So, you know, like the thing was, if you didn't see it in the 24 hours it was online, you, you didn't know how it was made. And that was a thing. But then actually I did um, an Instagram takeover for Assemblage magazine. Yeah. And I, I didn't know what the hell I was going to post. So I was like, oh, fucking hell. But what I had got on my camera roll was all these like in progress like stories. So I started posting those on their main feed and people really liked it. Yeah. Um, and I got a really good response. People actually really engaging in what I was doing, asking me interesting and quite intelligent questions about how I made things. And they didn't realise I did it like that. And, you know, what a long-winded process. And then you paint over something you spent three weeks working on. And I was like, yeah, I know. But it, it's a good, that's a good way to encourage conversation around your work, that you don't get just by posting finished things. And I find that very valuable. In terms of developing a peer network of other artists, which, if we talk about that later, I think that's something really important for artists to have in terms of raising their profile and getting other opportunities from, you know, like a supportive network. But also, it's just a really good way to, I suppose, generate a better understanding of what you do as yeah. an artist. And for me, that's really important. Because I think people make assumptions on Instagram very quickly about what they're seeing. You know, they're swiping through very quickly, liking or not, liking or not, but not really looking or thinking about what they're seeing. And I mean, my work's quite formal, you know, it doesn't mean anything. It is essentially I'm exploring painting. So I think if you understand your work well and you think about little hooks to get people interested, Instagram's a really good way to do that. And yeah. I think I get more engagement by posting in progress things. And people are very seduced by the romantic idea of the artist's studio as yeah. well. So if you have a studio that kind of looks cool, you know, I've got really nice light in mine, really nice windows, it's sort of a little bit theatrical looking, you can play with that, I think, to your advantage. And that helps you develop this brand, this mystique, this kind of identity that people associate when they see your posts. Yeah, and I think the, the, main, part, the main point about social media is that it's social for a reason, and it's, you shouldn't be using it to just put yourself or you put your work out there, you need to be engaging with other people and what they're doing. Or if you're not 
Instagram's just not, the algorithm's just not going to show your work to anyone. Um, yeah, it's not a one-way street, is yeah, it? You're not just putting stuff out yeah. there and then walking away from your phone. Yeah. You have to engage with what other people are doing. Yeah. But that benefits you, though. Then you, you know, that means you're higher up other people's feeds because you're commenting and liking on people's stuff. Yeah. And you're also just getting to know people as well. And yeah. like building a community and building a network and in the sort of traditional sense, but online. Yeah, and that's yeah. actually what I mean, is you can have this whole sort of global network of other artists and have yeah. amazing conversations with them and open up the opportunity for like sort of international opportunities. Yeah. Because I think a lot of probably maybe younger artists, recent graduates, they you know, the idea of having a gallery is very seductive, but there's other ways of getting your work out there and having a good, interesting experience as an artist that isn't just about showing in a gallery. You know, there's other things out there that are enriching yeah in we met through we first, did meet me and through, charlie met yeah. through instagram look at us years now. ago yeah exactly <laughs> sat in here <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on a friday night the, the wonders of instagram right i know um so bit of a dirty question but it's one that we get asked all the time how much of an artist's success is down to networking and who you know and how much time do you guys spend networking and etc etc I think it's changed so much, like, you know, recently, over the 10 years I've had the gallery, I mean, I, you know, I, I find social media quite frustrating, I think, because um, I, there's nothing like the good old fashioned kind of going to PVs and seeing people and having a chat and studio visits and, um, you know, open studios and all of that sort of things. Um, so, um, but I think, I think the way it's going, the way you know the, the online presence is is really important, and I think building that brand online is really really important for, for an artist. But you yeah you've got to find that balance somewhere because there, there is nothing worse than seeing some work online and thinking it's awesome and going to a studio and it's just such a different thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, and it, they've created this world, they've created this vision. Yeah. And the actual reality of it is very different. Um, Does that happen a lot, do you think, in your experience then? It's happened a few times, not a lot. I think you can get, a f it, it depends the type of work I'm looking for. I think maybe sometimes the quality can get kind of um, lost or the opposite. You know, it actually looks better than it is, you know, um, from sort of online to seeing it. So that can get a little bit lost, I think. Um, so it does happen sometimes, yeah. And I think, you know, there's so much more than just a visual, for me anyway, it's much more than just a visual thing. And it depends the type of gallery maybe you want to be working with. And, you know, a lot of my collectors aren't necessarily online in that way. Mm -hmm. So they're more of a get to know the artist, get to know me. It's about my relationship with the collector. It's about my relationship with my artist. It's not just a visual thing. It's about feeling for the work. So, and the um, artist, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, the relationship I have with my artist is so, so, so important. So their work might look awesome online, but we might not get on, you know, or <laughs> it just might not be my thing when I get there. So, yeah, um, I've kind of forgotten the question, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was about um, how much of an artist's success is down to oh, networking. Okay. I think it depends on the artist. I think that, yeah, maybe that's my. I think, I think it can be great for an artist, and it can really help them to move in the right direction. Um, so yeah, I'm certainly in favour of that. Yeah. I think who you know is really important, but it's sort of what we're talking about. That's the that's the whole point of you developing a network of people and sending emails to galleries or liking people's posts. That is you becoming known to people so you will get opportunities so I think it is important I think we all know that really otherwise we wouldn't be having a lot of the conversations that we're having this evening mm. of course it's important who you know if no one knows who you are you're not going to get anything are you <laughs> so it's really but, important. But there is something again you know there's something quite special as a gallery about finding an artist that that, that is literally just just flopped away of being an artist it's you know in there they're real and, it, and it's great. It's really nice. It's really refreshing actually now to find an artist that is just being an artist and loving it and um, and doesn't necessarily have that network, but maybe the gallery does, and then you build that together. 
you know, that's about building this kind of, you know, this network, this brand, this, this kind of vision. So yeah, it's, I think, yeah, I think that, that whole thing is a little bit lost. That discovery, like we were talking about before, has kind of is a little bit lost, maybe. Something, something that we also get asked quite a bit is how is, how important is it the, how important is the artist's location? Is it, is it now as important as it once was for artists to be in London or LA or New York? Or when I first um, started the gallery 10 years ago, oh, I, Bath, worked, right? I was in Bath, but I actually worked with a lot of artists in LA um, and sort of that in just America generally. And it, it was great initially, but actually I couldn't go and see them and they couldn't come and see me. And, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. social media wasn't what it was then. And, it, it actually, so much comes out of the relationship with an artist when you just sit down in the studio and have a cup of tea and you have a chat, or you go for a drink, or, you know, and that that's how my relationships with my artists are, are built, that's what they are built on. Um, so I think, and actually when I moved from Bath to London, I lost some of those relationships because we couldn't, we couldn't meet up as much as we used to, and, you know, some of my artists would just like pop into the gallery and, and have a chat and, and that would spark up some conversation about something that would lead to a new exhibition or... So for me, it's really important to have, you know, that relationship with, with artists, definitely. I'm not sure I could survive if I wasn't in London or a big city. I'm not sure I could either. Because I'd probably just yeah. go nuts because I'd be bored anyway. <laughs> but I think... I don't know, there's so many opportunities here that you don't get, and there's a commercial market here that there isn't in other parts of the UK in particular. Can mm. you comment on that, really? Um, although I'm sure it is perfectly you know, possible to have a great career as an artist elsewhere. I mean, it's cheaper for studios. You yeah, I think that's yeah. a lot of you know, sculptors, for example, you don't have any space. space. There's yeah. no space, so a lot of them are living outside of London, and yeah, and it, it means they can produce you know, bigger, better work. And, and I think also the headspace is maybe different. I think mm. sometimes being in a si- big city for an artist can be a little bit too overwhelming and too much, and there's so much going on, you're constantly comparing yourself. So actually not being in, in the big city and being, again, able to just be an artist and mm. create work, for some, I think, can be really beneficial. So yeah, it gets probably, like, you know, yeah, dependent on the artist, I think. Any questions from you guys about anything so far? No, we're doing a good either we're doing either doing a great <laughs> job of asking and answering <laughs> questions, <laughs> or you've all zoned out. Um, all right, so one another one we get asked a lot is about whether it's worth entering open calls, especially paid to enter open calls, um, which is a interesting topic. <laughs> I never enter paid to enter open calls because I don't want to pay for someone else's prize fund <laughs> when I don't get anywhere with it. I did years ago. I would get, I'd, I'd spend loads of money entering those things, and then in the end, you just realise that actually, there's always. I think you're going to stand me this There's always weird agendas with these things where, you know, the same people pop up on the shortlist, and you know they're getting the money. They're getting the you know a share of the thirty quid I paid to enter. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I don't think paying to do things is something that you need to do. I think it depends yourself. again. It depends on the artist. Some people maybe it is. It's a way of getting noticed, and, and yeah, those co- those things are part of their way of, of being seen. Yeah, I think if if it's say some big institution like the RA, yeah, a lot of people um, who get into the show have like really great success from that. When it's a small gallery, I'm not sure it's the same. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's very yeah. patchy, yeah. isn't it? And there's a lot of people mm. charging artists to enter fairly bogus opportunities. Yeah. I think. I think the RA though, I don't know, I think there's some status attached to it. It's yeah. a fairly shit show. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. awful. <laughs> it's <dreadful. laughs> it's but it's the RA and you're in the RA, so is, 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 it, is it worth you, it? If you, but if you know what that means, work, it literally everything goes. It, yeah. it, you know, in, mm. And the, the big, you know, there are big collectors there, there are, mm. you know, that people do go to it. And actually, a lot of well known artists also go into it. It's, I find it, you know, a sort of kind of strange thing really and how it has grown and changed but um again i just think it depends what you want from it so if, if it is that you know you could you could get noticed by a i don't know a curator or a collector might buy your work and that might lead to something else there are 
you know, opportunities there. But there's so much stuff, isn't there? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah completely. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah, definitely. I think yeah. some smaller galleries use the entrance fees for open calls as a way to fund the mm. rest of their the program. program for the year. Mm. Which is, yeah, pretty awful. Yeah, or like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've got no experience at all of the BP portrait price. But it's like, I think it's like 50 quid or something to enter, 40, 50 quid. And it's BP, like they, they don't need... <laughs> they've got, yeah, they've got the yeah. funds, haven't they? <laughs> BP uh -huh. are using sponsoring art competitions as a way to legitimise their brand anyway. Um, and... I can see how smaller galleries need, maybe need to fund the admin that goes into selecting. Well, I mean, Delphi and One is free because we disagree with pay to play. Um, but so, how do you feel about what were you going to say? You no, I was just going to say that, but you don't actually know when you pay for these things who sees your work, whether it's the judges or whether there's a pre selection yeah. thing. Yeah. A lot of these things are very opaque. Yeah. And I think you do need to be a bit careful chucking 30 quid here or there when the only person that sees your work is an intern and it never gets through to the judge <coughs> that you've paid to get to see your work. Yeah. yeah. I think there's some dodgy practice around open calls. Yeah. So how do you feel about these pay to exhibit type galleries? So you pay X amount for a bit of wall space. Can they ever be beneficial? I mean, if they come with uh, a group of clients that are going to come and see your work and hopefully buy it, but yeah. not if it's just a sort of big space that you spend lots of money on and nobody comes. Mm. Yeah, I think it all depends on how you promote it, doesn't it? Yeah. If you put a lot of time into making sure loads of people come see it and working on press a lot, then it possibly can be useful. But if nobody sees it, then it's But pointless. that's like a year's yeah. worth of work in the, before you put your work on the yeah. wall, though, yeah, isn't yeah. it? If they're not, are, they, these, are these galleries taking commission as well? Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes yeah. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. So I, th I think with, with that kind of thing, mm. Like there's one notorious one. I probably won't mention it. No, don't mention um, it. <laughs> but um, they uh, once you've paid to to exhibit there. I mean, as a as a recently graduating artist, you enter the art world and you're a little bit lost. You think I need to show my work. How do I do this? And you're tempted by these vanity galleries essentially. But once you've paid for that wall space, they've got no incentive to publicise or sell your work because they've made their money already. Um, mm. I think the only time when they can be beneficial is when you are just using them for the space and you're doing everything else yourself. So we as Delphine Gallery, we don't have a permanent space. So we hire venues, but that's just, that's all they are, they're venues. And then we do all of the admin, the curation, the publicity. We don't give them a commission. Um, but yeah, I can see how they would be tempting to people who, I suppose, are so early on in their careers that they don't have other opportunities. But I think they're essentially playing on, they're, they're just benefiting from artists without really giving anything back. It makes it a little bit shady. Mm. Has anyone had any good experiences with that, maybe? Not so much with the gallery, but something like um, the other art fair, for instance, yeah. where you pay for your stand there, yeah. and they are so fuzzy, because yeah. the artists have their own stand rather than shows in the gallery, yeah. and the idea being that obviously big machine as well that you know that is behind it so in a way if it for some artists it's 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 amazing mm. it's, you yeah, know it's no, such no, a no, good no, way of showing their work so yeah because really you are going to get people turning yeah. up they do have the footfall yeah yeah so that means that's a different thing to regard yeah mm. so Sometimes, you know, I think maybe sometimes what artists do forget a little bit is that, you know, you, you need to invest in yourself. So mm. whether that is, you know, going to an art fair like that or spending a little bit more money on your materials or, you know, getting yourself, you know, some good images taken, and that investment in yourself as an artist will come through in the end because, you yeah, you can't just create the work and not be seen if, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. What were you going to say? Hi, yeah. um, you know, like we've been chatting on Instagram, my name's Poppy, and I run a gallery in Camberwell. Mm -hmm. um, and the gallery works a bit differently in that I do put on shows of artists um, throughout the year. But if people message me and their work isn't quite ready for me to sell, I also have a different format whereby they can hire the space. Mm -hmm. at, as like, It's not expensive, basically. And I fully support, not in marketing, but I fully support the artists. Which 
allows a knee to see how they work for themselves. Because often, um, this is Christopher Brown, whose work I've just shown, it's amazing, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, and often, as you say, it's that relationship, meeting that person, seeing how they work, seeing how they work, like, means that actually if they put on their own show, which is really brilliant and they get on really well, then that means that maybe mm -hmm. we can develop a relationship mm -hmm. together. So I either work on a, I will show their work, they will have no upfront cost at all, just commission after all the marketing, or if they're a bit, they're still a bit green or like fresh out of being done, we can have the space. And that, that works mm -hmm. quite well, um, well that's worked quite well mm -hmm. so far for um, new shop. And I know that appear here um, uh, on my website where you can rent spaces for people who are not quite at gallery, Yeah, well, your system sounds quite good, and it sounds a lot. It doesn't sound like the kind of cynical pay to play galleries that we were talking about. <laughs> Actually, it's it's called it's called Blue Shop Cottage. If anyone listening or anyone here wants to uh, go for that kind of space. I'll get my email, by the way. All right, I'm, cool. I'm up on my phone. All right, great. Um, you mentioned a lot about recent art graduates and graduates. Yeah. How do you, as curators, look upon people who haven't been to art college and who are new to the art world? Um, because I know for this exhibition, I'm a Navi artist, and my background is I went to the private school where I studied and when I was born. I felt really embarrassed because I haven't got that, but I'm new to the art world. Do you curators specifically look at people with this lovely? Great question. I yeah. I have a master's degree in contemporary fine art, and no gallery has ever asked me if about my background like that. So um, it's been the, completely yeah. irrelevant. Some galleries um, do though, mm, and yeah, I mm. always feel a little bit embarrassed because I didn't study anywhere cool in London. Do you know what I mean? And I'm always a bit embarrassed. I am Birmingham. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you too, right? Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> So I think, I don't know, there's some baggage around that, though, about the, the kind of the weight of the institution and how that validates you as being a good artist mm. or not. Uh, um, yeah, I haven't got a degree, so, like, I'm, but it's never really held me back at all. But, yeah, I understand what you like. I sometimes feel like, oh, it's like, should I be, like, embarrassed about this? But, no, fuck it. I mean, I just want to say, I promise I wasn't asking you a little way of being like, <laughs> no, no, not at all. And I appreciate it's all part of the, the yeah to, to get the exhibition together. But for me, it's like it's my own personal how I feel, yeah. and I feel really because um, I was listening to you talk and thinking, gosh, you know, curators have such a place of power over it, and feel like really kind of oh, I don't know, it's just like oh my goodness. I've got um, I've got two I think two know. artists that didn't study at all. Mm. Um, and they self-taught artists, and they're awesome. Um, so it's it get, it's it's a difficult one because it it then means that when you're pricing your work, when collectors become interested, the questions they ask are different. Maybe the type of collectors that buy the work would be different. So some do, some really don't. Yeah. Yeah, and they don't really know what it means, really. But it, it, it's just a kind of tick box exercise, and but some it it, it is important. Um, so it again, I think it depends on the gallery you're working with, the type of collector that's interested. Um, but I I wouldn't. I personally would look at the work first. Yeah, it's about For being me, ready. That's the important yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, of, of all the artists that we show with Delphian, I have no idea whether most yeah. of them have been to art school or not. No idea. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think social media is a great democratizer because you can, you, you see the work before you really know anything about the artist. So it's the work that kind of leads it. Leads but now. that can be a bad thing as well, I think, because something, when you don't actually spend time looking at work, 
people, everything seems to be within the same visual register. It all looks great yeah. on the mm. screen. On a backlit, tiny yeah, yeah, little yeah. screen. But yeah. if you, it's the sort of thing mm. you say that when you see it in reality, it can be very different. Mm. Um, but also, it just means that people <coughs> stop thinking about what the work is and yeah. the thinking behind it and how long it takes because everything actually looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so that democratization can be yeah. very good in terms of being a leveler in terms of like maybe um, like social experiences for artists. If you haven't been to the right college or if you're not come from a kind of entitled background, mm -hmm. you might not know the right words to say, to use, to exp you know, to yeah. present your work. Mm -hmm. But you can make cool images that look great on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But actually, I mean, I've done it as well. I can be flicking down the feed really quickly. I like this, I like this, I like this. And then when you go back to it a few minutes later, you're like, God, actually, no, it's shit. <laughs> it's, you know, like it, what they're saying about it is rubbish. It's from a kind of frame of reference that is so outside what is rigorous enough to be interesting or relevant. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it can be a good thing, but also it can be quite a bad and misleading thing as well, that yeah. everything is on the same sort of level playing field. Yeah, my, my work um, is black and white, fairly detailed and um, uh, figuration, line drawing. And it just looks terrible on a tiny little backlit screen. So yeah, it can be. Mine looks fucking ace on the backlit screen. Yeah, <laughs> it, <laughs> it does. It loads of colour. Better, better than it does in real life. No, it does. <laughs> <laughs> no one has ever said that. <laughs> Thank you. Let's not forget, I am your boss. Yeah. Um, just throwing that out there. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, <laughs> sacked. So, Great Friday night then. Thanks for inviting me. We're starting back. So we both teach on a. Charlie is the course leader. I'm the course leader yeah. then. You, you teach also teach. On my <laughs> so maybe I don't anymore um, after this. Um, we'll find out next week on Wednesday. <laughs> you need to come in. <laughs> All right. Where were we? I don't know. Before we started bickering. I don't Give me know. a question, someone. <laughs> I think it's just all about drawing a balance, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think social media can be so dangerous for that. And yeah. It can really massively, and I find some some of the artists I work with, their work changes, and it's and then you're like, why why is it going in that direction? And you realise that they're like they're like this, and they're looking at what everyone else is doing, mm -hmm. and actually they're losing them themselves. And mm -hmm. I think you know. We do that in all, all, all kind of walks of life, but I think it can be so <coughs> dangerous. Mm -hmm. Or so, also changing depending on what the response is yeah. you're getting mm -hmm. from social media. So you're posting, and certain types of work are getting a yeah. better response from m many likes, mm -hmm. and then you sort of go, "Oh, that must be better. I'll go down this route." Mm -hmm. and it might not necessarily yeah. be. I think the best I was going to say that the more you post, the more you realise you can't rely on yeah, likes yeah. from kind friends yeah, yeah. and people at different times of the day, whether they're drunk or not. Yeah. <laughs> you know. No, you do though. Yeah, do, yeah. Because if you start posting at different times, and you can gauge the response. And actually, Instagram changes its algorithms all the mm -hmm. time. You can have like 500 likes for something that's rubbish one week, and 200 for something that you thought was the best thing you've ever made. The next. Yeah. You can't actually rely on that. It's not just about no. that. But as long as you're making stuff and putting it out there. Because yeah. I think I think actually promoting yourself is part of being an artist if you don't have a gallery to do it for you. So yeah. for me, that is an important way to spend some of your time. But you have to constantly be developing the material to put online in the first place. So that's the most important thing. And anything else you have to do around your practice that funds what you're doing or that supplements what you're doing or gives you another way to apply your skills like teaching or writing or curating, as a lot of artists do as well, that's important, it's still part of your practice, but it's not, it doesn't define you, I don't think, and that's the important thing for me, is that you know that you're an artist, that's what you do, and that you have other things that you do around your practice that yeah. somehow support or sustain or enrich it, and that you can give back as well, and that's what I think good teachers, good tutors in art schools, see that opportunity to, to give back. But sharing the loan, Mm-hmm.
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't get someone else to do my social media. I think that's a really important part of what I do. Yeah. Going back to what Nick said, um, I have noticed a kind of a, a trend at the moment in the, in the wider art world for brightly coloured, mm. slightly naive, bold, fairly flat painting. Mm. I think that's because that work looks very good on a backlit so screen on a t in a tiny little format. Um, and so they then become successful in social media, then they're now successful in the wider art world. Um, but that success is very transient. I mean, like Instagram yeah. is, is fashionable. So I think that might be great now, but you know, the, the, the trend will pass and there'll be something else that... Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not to say that a lot of it isn't great. It's just, I think, what, what works well on social media is then now, at the moment, working well in the, in the wider art world. And but do you think that social media, I don't think that there's a direct link between social media likes and then the sales of that medium? No. I not necessarily. It's not. But... It's a very different... Like, yeah. yeah, but the more, the more engagement something gets on social media, that just means, by its very nature, the more people are seeing it. So the more... The more people are seeing a certain type of work, the more likely it probably is to sell, just because of the wider group of people that are seeing it. But I think the punters who are flipping through their thing is not the same person who's purchasing that work, so I don't necessarily see that link. Like, I think if you have like a really easy looking image, which is like pretty, um, that a lot of people might like, it's like, ooh, nice colours, but it's those people I don't know, I, I, think, mm, I think the thing that social media is doing with all the bright colours, I think it's changing people's taste. And I think even for me, as a gallery looking for artists, if I'm looking via social media, my taste starts to change, it, it alters my taste. So if you look at me as a collector, I would probably purchase something now that I might not have purchased a few years ago, and that's possibly due to social media and the way it's it's moulded my taste in something. And it also depends on where the collector's coming from. It's for Del yeah, for Delphi, yeah. and I'd say probably 80% of our collectors are through social media that we that's our first point of contact. Mm. Yeah. So if if that's if a certain image is getting more engagement and that's what people are like, then it probably does work that way. Yeah. And they're more We'd, likely to sell. Delphian is just me and Nick and we've never hired um, marketing team or advertisers or nobody else has ever done our social media. Um, and so when we publicize a show, we are just posting about it on social media. And then, and we never list anything for sale online. Um, so people contact us through email, and that's how we sell them. So although all of our followers aren't buying work, they, they are kind of in there, I suppose. Um, yeah, social media. <laughs> yes, please. What so do you mean, sorry? If again, as it is, if, as it's a, if my work's gone to Delphian and like, I'm just being an artist, I can't really did it, in case you do an open house, what do you think is the best way to sell? Should I have an online shop? Mm. I think online shops are tricky if you're selling originals and you're listing them online because mm -hmm. if you art world all is is kind of very smoke and mirrors and if you list a, an original painting online and it sits there for three months not having sold, even though you may be selling loads of other stuff. If someone comes back to your shop and sees the same work, it looks like you're not selling and then people think you're not... Successful. Yeah. Um, so how do you sell without a gallery? Um, what do you guys think? I don't know. I think Open Studios are great for that. I think... Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they're really good for... And, and just, just, just do stuff, like do shows, just get out there. You know, um, just push your work in that way, I think. Um, I don't really know in a way how... I mean, there are lots of online platforms, like there's sort of such and things like that that you can use. I don't know... I don't know how, they are. Are. Don't know how yeah. successful they are. Is no, there any you with the, I worked with the auction collective and they okay. approached me to sell stuff in an auction. It wasn't available you online. Don't approach anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably.
probably should. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't. I think it's awkward and embarrassing. And actually, I do have yeah, enough is. things coming my way, luckily now, mm -hmm. that I don't need to think about approaching people. That doesn't mean I don't think strategically about expanding my, you know, my network of people or how to move up a little bit to like different level of galleries that I'd like to work with. That's part of it. I don't know. I think it's very difficult to sell stuff without. A gallery, and I don't mean being represented by a gallery, I just mean through a gallery or through an agent or through someone that has those contacts because most artists don't. I have lots of artist friends, none of them have got seven grand to spend on a painting. So I need to find people that have those contacts so they can sell it for me. And that is either through a gallery that will sell the work but then take 50% commission, or I have an agent that I work with, or you know, I exhibit a lot. Sometimes things sell or not. I don't have much success with open studios. People come, they pop around. They... Is that because of price point? Possibly. Yes, it might be. It might be. Mm. But also just people that the people that come as well. Mm. You know, there's a lot of nice people pootling around the studio, but they're not there to buy anything. They're there mm. because maybe they follow me on Instagram and want to have a chat in real life, or they've just come in to see their mate in the studio downstairs. Mm. Or it's interesting. One of um, a good client I have now. I actually met her when I, before I opened the Peckham Gallery, I was showing work from my house, um, and I had a show there, and she actually drove up in a blacked out Merc and got out and um, later on bought a six grand piece. So they are there, which, because I yeah. just didn't think that would happen at all, but it, it is there. If, and I think actually, I think these days a lot of collectors are wanting to find stuff again and actually you know they are going to open studios um, and I think curators are going to open studios and not you know I, I go to some I don't go to that many um, but I think I think there are some really good open studios out there and it is, it is kind of I think DIY doing. exhibitions that people organize themselves are far more exciting than mm -hmm. things in a crisp white walled gallery space there's people like I've People have done exhibitions in pubs, people do, yeah. there's exhibitions in a disused underground car park, there's a gallery that I just discovered the other day that is, the whole gallery is enclosed within one of those Perspex A4 planning application <laughs> folders on a lamppost. So there's, you don't have to be, and those things are memorable, you yeah, know, like they, yeah. you might not get, say, a, a millionaire collector walking up to one, but they're memorable and they, and they really work, I think. to the idea of like DIY spaces, the, the collective Dat Eagle 
they were moving out of their house and they had a few days, so they just staged an exhibition in their house. And it was mental. It, like, mm -hmm. all the artworks responded to the house. It, it was, mm -hmm. you had to put on these little shoe covers. Yeah. That kind of thing sticks in, sticks yeah. in your mind. Um, and we've got a friend who, while still a student, organized um, a studio, a show in his studio, unofficially, he wasn't allowed to. Someone from, I think, the New York Times, or not the New York Times, someone from like some big publication just happened to see it on its social media, went along. Now he's like doing incredibly well. So these things do work. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and social media is just a tool. It's yeah. just a tool. Yeah, it's reshaping Yeah, it is, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a tool to be utilised. Um, but also, it is it is great at a lot of things, and it's very, very useful when done right. But it it's definitely happen. not be on level. No, yeah, absolutely. You don't have a beat, you know, a person, a story, putting on those weird little shoes or whatever. Yeah. We'll never, ever, ever. Yeah, where just one algorithm change away from it being completely useless. Yeah. Just like it, it could go, like MySpace seemed like it was too big to fail and now that's disappeared. So um, yeah, I think it's actually important to try and bring what you have on social media out of it. So we collect email addresses and mailing list. have a mailing list and stuff because we, we know that a lot of what we do and a lot of our successes happens within social media, but that, that particular platform might not be around forever. Yeah, so. yeah, mailing lists are incredibly important because then you've always got that, you've always got that database of people you can email, and not relying on someone else's platform for you to reach people. So yeah, we spend a lot of time trying to build up a mailing list. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've got a mailing list as well. I think it's really important. Yeah. Um, yeah, please do. It's such a mix. Yeah, it's such. 
I've got a lot of really loyal collectors and you know I think that's helped me over the 10 years because they are coming back and they're buying not just the same artists but other artists um, and I think a good they all they buy different artists yeah. but I think I think a, a good gallery collector relationship is it's as much about that relationship as it is for your relationship with the artist because they are buying and investing in me and in my gallery and in my brand as much as they are investing in the artist. So it is, it's a relationship that you build and they then trust your judgment when it comes to, you know, you should, you should invest in this artist, you should buy this artist. They start to then, you know, like invest in you and in, yeah, invest in, in the artist. So, um, massive range. Yeah. I, and yeah, it is a huge, for me, it's quite a big range. Um, it maybe it depends on it. it actually maybe it doesn't even depend on the artist. Um, so there's not a correlation between say sort of emerging artists and investing might be younger or um, younger? not necessarily. Like some of my younger artists, um, there are probably younger buyers for them, but the the older collectors also probably yeah. also want to invest in that as well. Um, so I haven't. I think it probably depends on the artist you're showing um, as to who you're attracting, maybe. Yeah. I think, and sorry to bring up social media again in light of what we've just discussed, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think that social media has forced a little bit of a paradigm shift now because I think in the past, collectors would find a gallery that they their ideals align with and their tastes they align with and then stick with them as if it's a hairdresser and just yeah. go to them and just buy from them. Now, collectors are able to, collectors are able to find all of this great artwork that's out there. It's my hairdresser. <laughs> that's amazing. So do you only go to her? Yeah. Oh, exactly. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, so I'm now I think um, collectors can find the artists directly. So. The role of the gallerist has almost been forced into a little bit of a change, especially gallerists mm -hmm. at our level, so mm -hmm. focusing on emerging artists. Um, because now galleries have to be more connectors than they are the gatekeeper of the, the knowledge on what is and isn't worthwhile, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but because we, because we show largely super emerging artists, the price ranges are lower, which means people who aren't these multi-millionaire mm. trying to pay less tax by buying art people. Um, I'm not saying they keep my No, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not knocking them, but uh, a lot of our collectors are just people with a bit of disposable income that want to support art and they like having art in their house. Um, I suppose it's around price range. So yeah. we and because we sell most of ours to people who have found us through social media, the prices we sell at have to be lower because people who are buying based on an image that they've seen online don't want to be paying 20 grand for a painting unless it's by someone who's super famous. So the prices that you have to sell those works at have, has to be lower because if it were higher, people would want to see it in the flesh, I suppose, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, although it's actually surprised me over the last few years. So um, I don't know if you know um, the online platform called Artsy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of galleries, it's just for galleries, galleries use it. And then, you know, million pound sales are made online on this platform without even seeing the work. Is that um, down to the artist's name though? Yeah, it is for some of them. But, but I've sold things in high thousands of to someone in America who doesn't even know the artist. But they know you. No, they, they don't. No, oh, no? No, no, no. All right. Completely Maybe it's the name of Artsy that it's, gives I mean, validation. Yeah, I think, I think it yeah. does. I think yeah. it is. It, it kind of, yeah, it does give it that sort of gravitas, I guess. But yeah, yeah people are spending a lot of money online without seeing work. Um, so I think that has changed a lot. Is there someone else for the hand up? No? All right, let's go back to the sheet then. I'll wait for the noise. Yeah. Someone's eating a great <laughs> <laughs> You can eat it, the, the mics won't pick it up if you want to munch away on that. <laughs> Is that a vegan vegan sausage roll? Yeah, I can eat it. It is vegan. 
nice. <laughs> yeah, they are good, aren't they? Um, all right. Sorry, I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> you can nip out. Yeah, it's going to say it's Right, Nick, hit him with a question. Um, oh, uh, what was one thing you wish you started doing early in your career um, that those in the audience could start doing now that would help? See, I've got a good one for this if you want a second to think about it. Yeah, you go. About two years ago, I someone mentioned um, to me that they've got a spreadsheet of everyone who's ever bought work from them in the past and all their details, and on a separate tab, everyone who's ever expressed an interest in buying something and hasn't bought. And I was like, fuck, that is a good idea. And I've been exhibiting since 2012, and this was like two years ago. So I had to go through, and I've got like four email accounts, I had to go through all my social media, all my emails, find all those people, put them in this sheet. And then now when I do a print release, my last one sold out in 24 hours, largely to that list. So that's something that never even occurred to me. As soon as I did it, I was like, why haven't I done this from the very beginning? So I still don't know. No? I think mine's been different. Um, mm. Or is there something you can think of that artists should be doing but aren't? I think, I think the only thing I would say is, I guess just stay true in a way to what your practice is and, and who you are. And, I think it is a really difficult industry and it's it's really smoke and mirrors and cutthroat and, and all of that and I think just just yeah staying true to, to what your vision is yeah I think it's very it would be very easy to try and follow fashions and trends yeah. or cater to yeah. market demand keep making the works that are selling but I think that's very ultimately long long term quite destructive mm. anything John? I don't know it's a weird question can I read it again? So, is there anything you, you wish you started doing earlier in your career, or anything that you see that artists aren't doing that they should be doing that the retrospect has? Well, taught? I wish I'd spent less time reading about art and making more. Oh, wow. As someone that did a PhD, <laughs> I spent a long time making excuses not to make stuff because I was reading, and I think that doesn't help you actually once you're out of education. Yeah. Um, Although it's important while you're in education to have a well-rounded understanding of theory, but it's also not the same as doing work. And no. I think maybe I took quite a long time to understand that research is not work, that they have to exist at the same time, but at some point the work is more important, I think. But also I will probably <laughs> go back to the thing we talked about. I think you, ha as artists, you have to have some kind of understanding of how to use things like social media or whatever platform you have to promote yourself if you don't have someone to promote you for you. Mm. Um, and I wished I'd, I actually wish I'd started using Instagram earlier. I was quite late to start using it, I think. Yeah. And the person that told me to start using it has just walked into the room late, <laughs> Remy. Incredibly late. <laughs> Incredibly late. <laughs> but it was Remy that said, why the hell aren't you using Instagram? Because I met Remy on Twitter, because I used to do that quite a lot, because I was quite wordy then. When I was reading, I used to write more, and now I don't. I just post pictures. But actually, it serves me a lot better as someone that makes pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, it took me too long to work that out. One, one thing that you kind of touched on there, um, that I find with a couple of people I know, is they aren't putting things out there because they're worrying about being ready and they're thinking mm. like it's not there yet oh, as an never artist ready. yeah That's exactly rubbish. you should you're never, never you should never make a work and think this is absolutely fucking perfect couldn't be improved 90 percent of the work i send out for exhibitions i'm thinking this isn't perfect so it's you'll not. never be ready so just put it out there you can always delete the images later <laughs> um that would be mine i suppose can i just say one thing about um the instagram thing again yeah just to sorry to you um, buddy <laughs> majority of the artists that I show on Instagram, um, I'm a new gallery, so that's just what I do, and that may change with time. Um, the quality of your pictures as an artist is so important. Um, it does, they don't have to be like retouched, but just make sure you've got your camera, like, and just make, take a nice clean yeah. pictures. Yeah. I can't express that enough mm -hmm. because blurry, blurry, filtery, filtery, just, it's just not going to I'd always say like if you did anything tomorrow, like you would help yourself one thousand times better if you took nice clean images, either on a digital camera that you can upload or on the new snazzy iPhone. But that is just so important for people looking at your work because if an image is a little bit blurry, you know, curators and people are looking at images all the time. And if that image is five percent less than the next one, you're not gonna hit them between the eyes. So 
I mean, I agree. And when I say you, you should be aware of how to use Instagram, use it well. If you use it badly, there's no point doing anything mm -hmm. badly. So yeah, don't agreed. just use it because it's there. But even saying to narcissists using it well, like that's, that's quite a complex thing. You know, because a lot of people don't know about hashtag and there's so many complexities of like Instagramming well, but definitely the photo. I mean, taking it a clean photo is just, just mm. yeah. I just wanted to touch on that Charlie mentioned about reading less and doing more art. <laughs> Um, I didn't even do art school at all, um, and I I go to a lot of I meet a lot of people. I try to meet a lot of people, uh, but there's people that I meet that are quite pretentious, and if you don't know, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that in the art world, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but if I don't know about you know how the expressionist era started, then the conversation goes nowhere, and that's something that I've sort of had to learn by myself about things that that will spark up a conversation related to art. Because yeah. I guess you're right, you don't really just want to start talking about art straight over, have an interesting conversation. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, um, I sold a work once to someone who, I chatted a little bit on Instagram, and then I was doing like portraits of artists at the time, and I did one of Kerith Wynne, Kerith Wynne Evans, who, um, and then this guy contacted me, and I was like, oh, I collect his work, I fucking love this guy. And then he bought a work off me because we've been chatting about him. So it, it definitely is beneficial to have things to talk about with people who are obviously interested in art that isn't just yourself and your own work. So the dirty word again, balance, I'd say, is uh, mm -hmm. important there. Um, all right, let's, let's end with the lovely, nice one. If you were to give an artist one bit of advice or a, or a young curator, what would that be? It doesn't necessarily have to be one thing. <laughs> Be nice. Yeah, yeah. Be, no, that's be really important. Be pleasant to work with. Yeah, yeah be <laughs> nice like, is really important. Yeah, yeah definitely, really important. Because um, you, yeah, come across a lot of assholes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just to be too. like easy to work with is real plus. It does. It makes a massive difference. <laughs> yeah. For me, as a gallery, I've worked with so many artists, and if if we don't get on, it just doesn't. It just doesn't work. We have to have a good relationship. It's so so important, and it's. It works both ways, like be nice to each other. Yeah. We had an artist in our last show, I'm not gonna name names, but he was <laughs> he is probably the biggest name we've worked with. And um, his paintings his big paint we had a little one, his big paintings sell for twenty, thirty thousand. And he was an absolute dream to work with, he's the loveliest guy ever. But then we have exhibited in the past or met people who are fresh out of art school, no experience, and they're just entitled and it's very clear which one of those we'd work with again. So, yeah, be a nice person. Yeah. And work hard. Yeah, and be brave. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think actually, if I hadn't taken quite a number of risks along the last 10 yeah. years, I don't think I'd still be here in, in business. So I definitely think, yeah, take a few risks and push yourself out of your comfort, comfort zone every now and again as well as an artist. And yeah, definitely. It, it will serve you, I think, eventually. And also, I think, in a way, it's what we've talked about. You, you can't really... This isn't a game that you can win, either. It's such a mm. difficult and weird thing that we're all mm. doing. But actually, there aren't really right or wrong ways to do it. There's lots of things involved, like luck, or just where yeah. you are at a certain mm. time, or who mm. you know, or yeah. where you've been to college, mm. or whether your work looks good on Instagram. And mm. it's all very... There's lots of grey areas in all of this. So, for me, I think as long as you're proactive and you're doing things, and... You're documenting well and you're meeting people and you're nice to people and you're a good person to work with then word will get around as well yeah, yeah. as quickly as it will as if you're a massive dick mm -hmm. and you're working yeah. with people <laughs> and they never want to work with you again mm -hmm. yeah. no good news does travel quickly too yeah I yeah. Think. Definitely. yeah and taking risks is so important like i constantly feel like i'm winging it <laughs> so i mean it's um it's, yeah, you like, are. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, and that's fine to to admit, I think, and um, and yeah, like it, being an artist or being a gallerist, there's it is such a risky business anyway. Yeah. So. Um, I think also I think I've learned along the years that actually we're doing very similar things, and I think there's such a kind of gallery artist thing out there, and actually, you know. Yes, we are doing different things, and the fact that you know I am not making the work, creating the work, but 
there's still an element of creativity in what I do and, and in what they, the artist does. And actually, if you find that relationship that works, you are both you're both fighting the same battle. Um, and yeah, and if you can find that good relationship, then it can be really great. I'm a big advocate of the relationship of artists with galleries. Mm. And I've got a lot of friends who are amazing artists who do amazingly well selling prints and originals through their Instagram or whatever, who's just always out for their new galleries. Mm -hmm. And I always say to them, you need to show. And if you don't show, and people don't see your work in the flesh, it's a whole different conversation. Yeah. Yeah, gal yeah. galleries and artists Absolutely. exist in a symbiotic relationship that is so essential that if if either one of those players was unnecessary, they wouldn't exist. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Last well, well, yeah. point <laughs> I suppose, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there any other questions before we call it a day then? Would anyone like a really big sculpture? <laughs> 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 is it there? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, great. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And thank you for to these guys. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs>